you, Dan. Thank you very much. All right, I want to make sure that you can hear me. If you guys can hear me, just give me a yes in the chat box because sometimes I click the wrong buttons from time to time, and there's a lot of buttons in this office. All right, that looks good. Let me do a couple things here. All right, cool. That sounds good. Now, I use a pen to draw on the charts, which uh, may be a little distracting, but it helps me kind of teach what I need to get apart. So just let me know if you can see the red pen and answer this question. And then that way I'll know that all my stuff is working correctly. Just give me the answer to that right there, and that'll let us know what's going on. All right, I'm getting a lot of 200s. That's good. That's great. All right, cool. So I'll get started. So I'm going to share with you today one of my favorite ways to find trades that are trending or about to start going in the opposite direction. So if you think in terms of like mother of all bubbles or oh my goodness the indexes are rolling over or um, other stuff is starting to go higher or lower this is the first thing that I look at in order to do that okay so let's take a look at what we're going to be looking at so let's see here so first thing I have to do is do a warning disclaimer I am registered I am a registered series 3 and I am a series 30 which to you probably doesn't mean much. It just means I, I'm governed by two different uh, um, government officials, the NFA, NFA, and the CFTC. And a lot of people ask me, like, well, why are you registered? The reason I am registered is because I own a futures brokerage firm. Now, I'm not a broker, but I actually own a futures brokerage firm. And, and brokers are, are exactly what they're their names apply. A broker will make you go broker, so be careful with them. Um, their job is to make sure that you're doing more round turns and they're getting paid whether you make money or lose money. So I'm a Series 3 and I'm a Series 30. That just means that I took a class and got a 70% or more on them, and that's all that means. Now, the reason I'm registered is to own the futures IB was to lower my commissions on my round turns. Okay? I also own or lease seats on the exchange that I clear through. So in other words, and one of the best kept secrets a lot of people don't know, you don't have to really have any skills or anything. You can just pay for an outright license and buy it like a house. You can also rent or lease them, I should say. You can lease them on a month-to-month -month basis depending on what markets you trade on. You, there's no qualifications. You just pay uh, a lump sum of cash, and then they'll give you the license. As long as you're not a, a, a known terrorist, you don't even have to be a U.S. citizen, and you can lower your commissions. Now, when you're thinking about that, you're probably saying, why did you do that? Well, if you've ever traded futures or stocks or options, let's say that your round turn is $5. My round turn, so that would be $2.50 in and $2.50 out. Mine's nowhere near that. That's why I do all that stuff. So that's why I'm registered. Now, it is very, very important. You will not hear me on any of this presentation today say guarantee. There are no guarantees in life. You always hear me say hypothetical, uh, pr uh, probability, um, I, I will not be talking about guarantees. The reason they call it trading and not guaranteed income generation with zero loss is because it's called trading. We speculate for a living around here. It's also the same reason that fishermen call it fishing, not catching, and it's also the reason hunters call it hunting, not killing, because you can go fish for three or four days and not catch a thing. You could go hunt and set in, a, set in a blind for two or three days and not see anything. So it's very, very important that you do not trade with more money than you can afford to lose. Only trade with discretionary income, okay? Now, I'm registered in NFA. They will audit a lot of this stuff. Uh, ch change your bait, Mark says. You need to change your bait. That's pretty good. So um, I like to make the disclaimer a little bit more harsh to make it more realistic. Danger. Danger, Will Robinson, you're probably going to lose all of your cash trying to learn and figure out how to trade. Your trading career may end up like this. There's a high likelihood it will. It's like a bad country song in reverse. Your wife's going to leave you, probably for your best friend. Your kids are going to grow up hating you. Your dog is going to die because there are no cats in country songs. They are going to repossess your Ford or Chevy pickup truck. And they're also going to repossess or foreclose on your single wide or double wide trailer. If you understand the disclaimer that I have just read to you, please give me a yes in the chat box. That way, if the NFA comes and audits this, they'll be like, well, Hubert did his job. He tried to scare the life out of him about not trading. All right. Uh, so screen should still be on the warning. All right, cool. All right, so let's get to it now. 
Uh, my name is Hubert Sinners. Uh, glad to see you're so optimistic, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm known in the trading and investing niche as the guy with the no BS approach to uh, trading and investing. Uh, I just kind of call them how I see them. That's how I was uh, raised, and that's kind of how, how I continue to be. Now, with that being said, I still think you have a decent shot of doing this. I don't know you personally. I don't know if mommy and daddy fought about money issues and you were around and it, and it affected you. And All of us are jacked up individuals in, in one way or another. So I don't know you. I don't know your personal situation. I don't know if you came from money. I don't know if you came from no money. I don't know if you came from a middle background. I don't, I don't know if you have self-esteem issues. I just don't know you personally. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of my story, and then I'm going to share with you uh, a way to shave about five years of just blood, sweat, and tears off of my experience and implant it into you. Okay. So um, if we take a look uh, at uh, how I started out, I started out when I was about 17, and when I was 17, I started here, S-T-A-R-T, -T, and then I want to end here, right? So I'm just like everybody else in the United States. I wanted to, when I was a kid, I was like, man, I just want to have a lot of money, right? Because I didn't have any when I was growing up. I was like, I just want to be a millionaire or a multimillionaire, and I left the house when I was 17, and it took me longer to hit those millions than I thought it was. I was like, well, I'll hit it by... 25 easily. It took me longer to do it than that. Well, I think it takes everybody longer because you got to figure out a few things. So we'll just say that our goal is to make a million dollars because that's a, a nice term that a lot of Americans like to use. Now, when I left the house at 17, um, I had a couple of different options I could have done if I stayed in the, in the rural mountains of eastern Kentucky. Number one, I could have been a teacher, which I didn't think uh, would do well for me. I could have been also a factory worker which that's exactly what my mother and father did. They were factory workers at American Standard, and they made uh, faucets and commodes and sinks and showers and stuff like that. I didn't, I didn't do that. I worked there for a couple summers during uh, summer break, and I was like, man, I do not like putting this screw in this faucet 10,000 times a day. It's a little monotonous. Now, I could have also been a coal miner, but I didn't want to be in those little cramped spaces because you pretty much guaranteed to either die of black lung, a cave-in, electrocution or drowning. So those were the, the risks there. Now there were a few other opportunities I had which I passed up. <clears throat> if we go three, four, and five, could have been a meth dealer or cook like Breaking Bad. Uh, could have been in the weed business, the marijuana, uh, either the growing or the selling of, of the marijuanas. Um, or could have been a moonshiner, right? All three of these had a risk to reward ratio that I didn't think would be well for me, and I would have probably, if I would have done any of those three, I would have been like, well, I got to be one of the top guys, right? One of the top three at least, which would have landed me in 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 a jail cell with Bubba as a uh, as a roommate, and uh, trying to fight and, and scramble to see who gets who gets the top bunk, who gets the bottom bunk. I didn't I didn't think that was a good risk to reward, so I was like, all right, here we go. All right, so what I did is I left, and I went on my quest to find really super successful, driven, and wealthy individuals, and I learned from them. And what I learned from them were there were three main ways you could generate wealth. One, two, and three. And not necessarily in this order, because sometimes the businesses will do better than the trading, sometimes the trading will do better, and sometimes the real estate is kicking both of the rear ends. <clears throat> so you can do trading and investing. All right, that's one way. You could do real estate or you can own or invest in businesses. So I do all three of those, all right? So that's a combination. I will tell you the more money you make, that as long as you don't have to scratch out all of your living from trading and investing, it tends to work out a little bit better just because, because your, um, your mindset is a little bit more free and you're not trading with scared, scared money and you're not worried about, oh God, I gotta make enough money this month to pay off the mortgage, pay off the life insurance, to pay off the medical insurance, and to feed the kids. So if you do have other sources coming in, it does free up your mind to make a little bit more money. Now, I have been fortunate enough, lucky enough, and worked hard enough to where now I belong to about three different masterminds, and most of them cost about $25,000 a year to be involved in. That's your initiation and your dues fees every year. And um, what we do is we get in a group of about 18, 18 to 75 either millionaires or multimillionaires. We have a couple billionaires that stop by from time to time. And I'm always really, really curious of like, all right, how did you make it? What did you do? What's the mistakes you made? Uh, it's because I don't want to repeat them, right? So I've never seen anybody um, go from zero to hero or from zero to a million dollars 
in less than eight to ten years. And 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 after you do that, after eight to ten years, you're labeled an overnight success story after, because your blood, sweat, and tears, and you're just working your ass off behind the scenes. Nobody sees all the blood, sweat, and tears you're putting in. And then uh, by a miracle, you're now a millionaire eight to ten years later, and everybody's like, oh, you're so lucky. I've also never seen this happen, and in my investigation and doing all the interviews with everybody in the mastermind, I've never seen anybody that just stair steps their way either. What I found is there were a couple of them that did get lucky in the beginning and then just would trade the momentum of that luck and go higher and higher. For the most part, most of us had a lot of early failures, and then we would just kind of figure out we'd be going like this right here, and it would look like a real weird spaghetti ball of success and failure and failure and success, and eventually you'd get here. So I don't want to, I'm not here to uh, make sure that you're not delusional or blow smoke up your rear end. Um, if you're trying to make any type of money or any type of success, you're going to have to work your ass off for it regardless. Anything worth uh, gaining or working for is going to be hard. It's not going to be easy. All right? So here's a couple of pictures of some of the folks that are in our mastermind and stop by from time to time. This is me and Paul Abdul. She's actually about six inches shorter than that because she's got six inch heels on that photo. This is Sir Richard Branson. He's got more hair than I do, but I've got more chins than he does in that photo, which means I'll probably die of a heart attack before he turns 120 years old. This is Mr. Wonderful. He's on the hit show, The Shark Tank. And if you ever have to have dinner with him, he's going to wear you out talking about wine. And if that's your thing, he's your guy. And then this is Dave Ramsey. You either love Dave or you hate Dave. And Dave and I are, uh, and my businesses um, do business with each other. And Dave's an interesting guy. Uh, and then this is a picture of me. I am in front of these six 24-inch LCDs. Now, in this office, I'm surrounded by these things. There's all kinds of different monitors in this office. And I know there's going to be some study in the near future that, that says... Um, Heads up, if you're surrounded by more than four LCD screens, it's either going to be brain cancer or testicular cancer. So I know I'm screwed one way or the other. So when I was a kid, I grew up watching a lot of Ghost of Mr. Chicken, Scooby-Doo, and Batman. And I was like, if I ever quote-unquote make it, I'm going to build the big house on the hill. And I want to have some of those really cool bookcase doors that lead into secret passages. I just thought they were really cool. And I was like, man, that would just be neat. So... My house is now my home office. I walk downstairs, and there's a bookcase that I pull a book, press a button, and it opens up into a 1,500-square-foot office where me and my team work every day on our businesses, our real estate business, our trading and investing business, and that's where we work. And it's, it, and I know it's childish and immature, but it's kind of cool, and I kind of like it. So, And everybody always asks, like, how much do those doors cost? They're not that expensive. They're anywhere from six to 800 bucks. And you just put a, have a general contractor replace your door with that, and it's really cool. So let's get started here on what we're going to share with you. So congratulations. You're in the right place at the right time, and here is why. I'm, what I'm going uh, to do is I'm going to take my, my 25 years plus of trading experience, and I'm going to give you five years of that and just implant it in your head, and I'm going to show you a way to look at technical analysis that will make it easier for you to read charts, okay? And it's going to enable you to take your technical analysis and your chart reading ability to the next level, all right? So what does this work on? This works on stocks, works on options, futures, forex, bonds, gold, commodities. Before I go any further, um, what do you currently trade right now? Do you trade more stocks, options, futures? Forex, what do you trade the most of right now? Just type it in the chat box and I'll see what everybody trades. Bonds, futures, ES, stocks, okay. Right. Stocks, C CFDs, currency, futures, everything but Forex, Forex, commodities, futures. Ah, okay, okay. All right, so we're in good, good shape here then. And then real quick, what's your preferred time frame? Do you do more day trading? Do you do more swing trading? Or do you do more position trading? In other words, like you're investing. All right, swings, swings, day, some scalps, day. All right, so day and swings. More swings than anything. Okay, all right, cool. So this will be helpful for, for most of you here. All right, so let's take a look at the next slide. 
which is this will be different, but in a good way. You can probably tell that I like to cut up and have fun. I've never met anybody that gets out of this thing called Life Alive, so I figured you might as well have fun while you're here. Now, I do take what I do for a living very serious. I just don't take myself very serious. I don't think there's any sense in it. So here are the back testing results of this strategy slash tactic. Now, this indicator, it should be on everybody's platform. If it's not, you just don't have a good platform. And it's not anything personal, but this strategy is really good. So is the indicator. And if you don't have it on your platform, you should change platforms. I am not here to sell you an indicator of any kind. I am here to give you the opportunity at the end of the webinar if you want to learn more on how to use it properly, you can do that, but I'll give you enough information to make you dangerous today. All right. So on the S&P 500, the, in the last five years, in the stocks in the indexes, it has worked on 430 out of 500 stocks. So it works on about 86% of the stocks on the S&P 500, so that's pretty good. Now, if you would have taken every single signal on long, short, short, long, so in other words, if you would have taken the long here, long here, short, long, short, long, short, short, long, then you would have got a return of 33%. Okay? So now, if you filter that out, you can get a 79% return if you remove the counter trend signals and wait for a three day or three bar confirmation. All right? So, and it's very easy to do. All you're going to do is you're going to remove the counter trend signals and you're going to do a three bar confirmation. So here's what that looks like. If you've got a valid uptrend like this, okay, and I don't want you shorting this and buying that. I want you buying this and buying this and then buying this. I don't want you going into the counter trend moves. We're going to filter those out. Now, it works on most stocks across the S&P 500. It's been profitable on 29 currencies over the last, <clears throat> excuse me, over the last 10 years. i got to take a drink of water. Hold on. Oh, man. Got a catch in my throat. Now, the time frame that I like to use on this strategy is a daily, hourly, and a 10-minute chart. So daily, hourly, 10-minute. Dear goodness, hold on. At least I might have muted the mic before I coughed in here that time. Thank goodness. All right, time frame selection. So pay attention to this slide because this is the most important slide in the presentation. Really important, since we're looking at the daily time frame, so the daily time frame is this is where I start everything from first. I got one. I just put in, my wife's trying to hand me some hauls so I don't die here in, on this webinar. So a daily time frame, my time frame in the trade is going to be weeks of time. If I'm looking at a daily chart, okay, uh, will 15 minute do? We don't have a 10. Yeah, 15 will do fine. Um, if I'm looking at a daily chart, then the, the cloud is going to extend to the right of the chart 20 to 30 days. All right. So if I'm looking at a daily, I know my time frame on this trade will be weeks of time. If I'm looking at an hourly chart, then I know I'm going to be in the chart, or I'm, I'm going to be in that trade for days of time. So in other words, it's going to extend to the right three days. And if I'm looking at a 10 minute time frame, I'm going to be in the chart or the trade for hours. So in this example, I'm going to be in it for four hours. Now that could be less or more, but that's what I'm going for because it's going to extend to the right. So daily, weeks, day, uh, hourly charts is going to be for a day. Ten minutes, I'm going to be in it for hours. <clears throat> so for a day trade, I could do either a ten minute or an hourly chart. For a trade that I'm going to hold, and if you're options traders, you would use these for monthly, and you'd use this for weeklies. All right. You use a daily chart for monthly options, and you use an hourly chart for weekly options. This is what you want. This is the number one technique used in Japan, actually eight years in a row. It's been the number one book in uh, Japanese technical analysis. Glance, you're immediately going to know what's happening as soon as you glance at the chart. You're going to know exactly what's happening in seconds. Your sound is starting to break up. It's probably my voice starting to break up. Hold on. There you go. Does that sound better? I'm doing an audio check here. You'll know exactly what's happening in seconds. It is designed to produce very clear trends and signals. All right. 
So this is the edge for you now. Now, a lot of indicators will tell you what happened in the past. Some indicators will tell you what happened in the present, like right now. But not very many indicators will tell you what's probably going to happen in the future. So the cool thing about this one is it will do the past, the present, and it will give you a future forecast of where it thinks if it's going to sell off where it's going to go or if it goes into overhead resistance. Now, now we're going to get into the part, uh, the part where we learn how to use this thing. And the, and the study is called Ichimoku, all right? Ichimoku Cloud Charts. Now, there's only three books written on the thing, and if you've ever had to translate a book from Japanese, it's expensive, and it's kind of a pain in the butt. Do you have a black chart on your screen with a blue, looks like a little stream or ribbon running through it? Give me a yes if you've got that. All right, cool. Now, we're going to go back to, like, grade school. I'm going to tell you some stuff to write down. You're going to write them down, okay? This is just how I teach, and it's how I learn, so it might help you too. So first, the first thing with Ichimoku is it's a trending type of technical analysis, all right? It can be used for counter-trend trading too, and I'll teach you some of that, but the first theory behind Ichimoku is this thing is going to be either support or resistance. If whatever you're trading is above, if the price action is above, the cloud, and this thing's called the cloud, C-L-O-U-D. If it's above the price action, if the price action is above the cloud, we're going to be considered bullish in nature, okay? So everybody write down in the chat box, above the cloud bullish, and just type it into the chat box. Now, if the price action is below the cloud, then we're going to be considered bearish in nature, all right? We're going to be considered bearish in nature, all right? So you can see here, it's going to act as either a nice little fluffy pillow or a mini trampoline. So in this example, you can see that held pretty good, this held pretty good. That one there went, it, the top didn't hold, and the bottom, it actually went below it and traded one, two, three, four, five, six, six bars below it, but it did snap back. This one held really well, a little mini trampoline there. And what this is telling us, like, heads up, this thing is in a good mood. It's trading higher. It's trading higher, and it's probably going to trade uh, sideways to slightly higher because you can see the angle of attack on the cloud is pointing higher. If this thing was to sell off, it would either go to the top of the cloud or the bottom of the cloud and then bounce back into new highs. All right, so first things first, let's, lead, let's use our components here. Write down C-L-O-U-D because it has a lot of different components. It has four different pieces that we have to learn. So write down cloud in the chat box, so just so I know that you're paying attention here, go C-L-O-U-D. That's this little blue thing, okay? That's the cloud. All right, this second yellow line is called the turning line, T-U-R-N. So now I'll write down turning or turn line. That's right, Kuru, Kumu. All right, so you've got the cloud and you've got the turning line. You consider this the fast line, okay? Now, it, it's almost calculated like a nine period moving average, except it's not, okay? So it's, it, that's going to be the turning line, okay? The, the third line we're going to use, so here we're going to go cloud, C-L-O-U-D. This line is going to be the turning line, T-U-R-N. And then this line is going to be called the STD or standard line. So if the yellow line gets broken, it tends to go to the purple line. And then it usually bounces off the purple line and goes higher. But if it breaks through the purple line, then the next place it goes to is either the top of the cloud, bottom of the cloud, or if it goes one, two, or three bars below the cloud, then I'm going to start getting short. Okay? So you can look back here in the past. Broke the yellow, went to the purple, bounced back up. Broke the yellow, uh, went to the purple, jumped back up. Oh, broke the yellow, closed below the purple. All right, now we're going to go down to the cloud. So you can see that again. Broke the yellow, went to the purple, smacked back up. This one broke the yellow and the purple, so it went to the top of the cloud, then the bottom of the cloud before it continued on. Now there's one last thing we have to know about. So we've got the cloud here, C-L-O-U-D. We have the turning line, T-U-R-N. We have the standard line, the S-T-D. And then we have the lagging line or the confirmation line. 
So those are the only components that we have to know about. So in this trade setup, <coughs> what I would be looking for is I would be looking for the S&P in this example to sell off eventually, and I would pick it up at 1909, okay, with a tight stop loss, and it should bounce up in the in in uh, the future. Now, if we look at this, let's talk about this is going to be the past P A S T. This is what happened in the past, the lagging line. This is what's happening right now. This is the present. I'm just going to write down now, okay? And then this is what's going to happen in the future, okay? So if it does sell off, goes to the purple, and if the purple doesn't hold, that should hold and this should hold. If it doesn't, what are the Japanese names for turning standard and lagging line? Matt, I wouldn't know how to pronounce them. I, I can show you my settings in TradeStation so you can copy them, but I wouldn't know how to pronounce them correctly. Yeah. Uh, the session is not useful for day trades, I guess. No, no, you could use a 10-minute all day long. A 10-minute trade will be good for four hours. That's considered a day trade. So I'll show you. We're going to do a lot of live charts here at the end because I've got some time with you guys, and we're going to go through all the markets, and then um, what we will do is we will find some good trades uh, for swing trades, and we'll say we'll also look at some stuff that looks good on day trades too. Yep. All right. All right. Let's go through some of the good signals. Now, we're first going to figure out how these lines are calculated and what they all mean. So the turning line is a midpoint calculation where you take the high and the low of the last nine days and then you divide it by two. That is substantially different than a nine-day moving average. A nine-day moving average just takes nine days, averages it over nine days, and then gives you that plot. This is going to take the high and the low of the, of the, of the nine days and divide that by two. So here's what that looks like. This is the red red line. That is the turning line. It's the one closest to the price action. This is today, day nine. And then we just count back eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We look for our low in that range of nine days. And in this case, the low is 434.39. We try to find our high here, which is pretty easy to locate. And that's going to be 465.75. We're going to take these two numbers. We're going to add them together. Okay? We're going to not multiply them, but add. We're going to add them together, then we're going to divide it by two. Now, the math is done for you down here. And no, I'm not some mathematical genius. In high school and college, I got D's in math, not B's. Now, that number comes out to be 450.07. Okay? Now, that's that number. If we break 450.07, where are we probably going to go to? And remember, the first thing I, I shared with you is. We came from below the cloud, we went into the cloud, so this is going to be overhead resistance, right? Because we came from below the cloud, we're bearish, it rolls back over. If we break the red line here at 450, 450.07, where's the next place we're going to go to? Yep, probably the bottom of the cloud. All right. Now, if the bottom of the cloud doesn't hold, which is probably not because we have came from below the cloud, our next place is this little green line here will act as a little magnet, right? And it'll suck the price down here to our next calculation, which is 425.42. So we'd want to short here at 450 and hold it till we get down here to 425. That's not too bad of a trade. Now let's talk about the standard line. The standard line is the second fastest line. You can uh, it's it's you've got the turning line and the standard line. It is a midpoint of the high and the low of the last 26 sessions. You're going to take the high, you're going to take the low of the past uh, of the last 26 bars. Then you're going to divide that by two. That number is your midpoint. So here's what that looks like. Now remember. The red line here is the, is the turning line because it's closest to the price action. The green line here is the standard line. Here's how it's calculated. We're going to take today, that's the 26 bar, count back 26 bars, 26, 25, 24, 4, 3, 2, 1. We're going to, we're going to highlight our low. We're going to highlight our high. We're going to see our high is 465.75. Our low is 385.10. We're going to add these two numbers together and then divide them by two. That number we will get after we do our math is 425.42. Now, you don't have to worry about doing any of this math. The reason I teach it because I know some people uh, need to know this information. Most of us do not, 
but it is useful to know how things are calculated so you'll know what they're doing. So in this example, you can see it's already done for us, 425, 42, it's already done the math. So if it breaks that red, since we were bearish in nature, when we came up to the cloud and the cloud held it as overhead resistance, if it breaks this red line, it's probably going to go to the bottom of the cloud and then to that green line. All right, cloud span A. Midpoint of the turning line and the standard line shifted 26 bars forward. Now here's what that looks like. What we're going to do is we're going to look at the, remember the one that's closest to the price action is called what? Turning line. The one second closest to the price action, standard line. We're going to take the midpoint between those two lines and then shift it in the future, 26 bars. That's going to give us a piece of the cloud. Same thing here. Um, we're going to take standard line, turning line, midpoint between the two, shift it in the future. That's going to give us a piece of the cloud, either cloud span A or cloud span B. Now, cloud span B will be the midpoint of the high and the low of the last 52 sessions shifted to the right of the chart. So in this case, you would take, here would be today, here would be 52 days later in the past. Here's the midpoint between uh, A and B. And we're going to shift it in the future, 26 bars, and that's going to give us part of the cloud. All right, lagging line. The lagging line is the price line close shifted back 20, 26 bars in the past. So the lagging line in this case is this little blue line. Okay, it lags. So this is fast, this is medium, and this is slow. Okay. So here's what this looks like. Here's the price action. We take the price action, we shift it back in the past, uh, 26 bars, and there's that blue line. We're going to use that for confirmation. Now, here's how you spell. A lot of people ask me, like, how do you spell Ichimoku? You spell, and I'm dyslexic, so I break everything down like this. It's I-C-H-I-M-O-K-U. I-C-H-I-M-O-K-U. Ichimoku is how you pronounce it. Um, John, I'll get to your question here at the at the at the uh, end of the presentation. I'm gonna have plenty of time to go through Q and A and also live charts. So here are some signals for Ichimoku. Lagging line crossing the cloud is the most powerful, uh, the powerful and most strongest, and also the slowest signal you can take when the lagging line crosses the cloud. Okay. Uh, when the price crosses the cloud is my favorite, and this is the one I'm going to teach you today because it will teach you how to trade trends and trend reversals. So if you've got a market that's about to turn over and die or make a new bottom and rip higher, that's the one I always look for first. Price action crossing the cloud. Now, uh, there's three different types of crosses. There's a one bar cross, there's a two bar cross, and there's a three bar cross. One, I label as aggressive. Two, I label as moderate. Three is conservative. And then if I can get the lagging line to confirm my three bar cross, then it's a confirmation of a conservative setup. So that would be the fourth type, a confirmation with a with the lagging line crossing with me. Price and lagging line touching the cloud. The cloud spans crossing or changing colors is a signal. The turning line crossing the standard line is considered a crisscross trade, and we'll go through that in just a second. All right, so let's go through the most powerful signal that you can take. It's also the slowest one, and it's going to leave a lot of money on the table a lot of times. Do you see this old chart of Apple on this PowerPoint where Apple was nice little bullish move here? It stayed mainly above the cloud, and then you had this lagging line, this blue line here at point A cross the cloud. You see that? So the, the theory here is you get short when it crosses below the cloud, and you would stay short until it crossed back above the cloud here. The only problem with that, you remember how it's calculated? It was calculated by doing a 26-bar look back. So it's the price action looking back, shifting price back 26 bars. So you're not going to be short here. You're not even going to be short here, here, or here. It's going to be 26 bars later okay so you're going to be short about here at about the 590 area and then you would cover about at the 500 area now in the grand scheme of things that's still 90 points that's 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 not a bad trade right but it leaves a lot to be desired so 
it is a good trade. It is a strong trade. It's very powerful, but it leaves a lot of meat on the bone. I want us to chew some more meat off of the bone. So this is my favorite trade to do with this thing, and it's considered when the price action closes below the cloud by either one, two, or three bars. One's aggressive, two's moderate, three's conservative, and the fourth with fourth one. If I can get my three bars plus the lagging line, then that's going to be a confirmation of a conservative setup. So here we've got the cross, then we would short that, and then what I would do is I would wait until I got one, two, or three bars to close back above the cloud. So in this example, we would be short around 620, and we'd cover around 480. So there we don't leave as much meat on the bone as we do on the last trade. That's my favorite trade within Ichimoku. All right. Now, uh, you, you can also use, uh, since we're below, now we're, we're bullish here, and then notice when the price action closed below the cloud. Now we're bearish in nature, right? And then what I want to do is I can short when the lagging line touches the cloud, and I can also short when the price action touches the cloud. And I can also short when I drop back below the, the, the standard line or, or if the turning lines and the standard lines cross. So here's a, an example of a crisscross trade. So here we're bullish in nature because we're above the cloud. Notice where the turning and the standard line cross right there. That is a short signal. I would not take that because we're still above the cloud. Okay, I would let it drop below the cloud like this and then let it cross once and cross twice. So Chris and then cross. That's a short. Chris, cross, that's a short. Chris, cross, that's another good short. Okay. All right. So I don't know why I have that slide in there. It's just weird. Hold on here. I'm messing up the slide. Give me just a second. I hit the I hit the end slide and not the advanced slide. Sorry about that, guys. Give me just a second. I'm almost there. I think what we're doing next is looking at live charts anyway. Let me see. Lagging line. We got that. Oh, okay. All right, there's that one, that one, that one, that one. All right, here's the bullish signals. It should have a slide that says bullish signals on your chart. Let me know when that shows up. Bullish signals. Price above the cloud is bullish if it's above the cloud. Price in the cloud are bullish if they come from the bullish side. The lagging line crossing the cloud is the main signal of trend change. Price crossing the cloud is an earlier but less reliable warning of trend change. Okay. Price and lagging line will often find support at the cloud's edges. Cloud span crossing may be a sign that the trend is changing. Be on the lookout for thick clouds after a run-up, which could mean that the trend is about to change. Now, I know you can read. There's no sense of me actually reading the bearish signals to you. They're the exact opposite of the bullish signals. So what I'm going to let you do is I'm going to let you read this slide while I grab a quick drink of water and another halls so my throat will hold up to the presentation here. So go ahead and read the bearish signals real quick, and I'll be with you in just a second. <clears throat> All right, there are the bearish signals. Now let's take a look at, we've already talked about the back testing, that this thing back tests really, really well. Um, there's the S&P 500, and uh, been profitable in 20, 29 currencies over the past 20, uh, over the past 10 years. Time frame selection is very, very important. If you're looking at a daily chart, we could be in the charts for weeks. It's going to extend to the right of the chart 20 to 30 days. If we're looking at an hourly chart, we know it's going to extend to the right about three days, okay, three days, So and sometimes more, but it's definitely going to extend to the right three days. It could continue for more days than that if we get a nice little move. On a 10-minute chart, we're going to be in the chart, uh, we're going to be in the trade for hours, so that's where you're going to do your day trade. Um, Multi-time frame selection, my favorite is daily, hourly, 10-minute. 
Number one question I get on this is best stop to use. So I want to just kind of get that out of the way. I like to use the parabolic SAR in order to uh, properly trail a stop on this. You can also use the bottom of the cloud if you're long or the top of the cloud if you are short. So let's take a look at some live charts because as, as useful as PowerPoint is, you cannot um, do anything without live charts, I mean, if you're a trader. So that's what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some charts, and then I'm going to ask you for some symbols. Let me get through the major futures markets first, and I'll show you how I use this, and I'll show you how useful it is. So let's just go at ES, okay? So here on the ES, you can see that we have a major uptrend, right? We have a major uptrend. We're above the cloud. We're uh, above the cloud here. Now, we have broken below the yellow, and we went to the purple. Now, yesterday, we closed below the purple, so where are we going to go next? We're probably going to go to the top of this blue cloud right here, right? We're going to go somewhere in here. Now, what I have found, because I've been using it for years and years, is you can also use about a 50% retracement between the purple line and the top of the cloud as invisible support, okay? So on the S&P, the S&P looks like it's going to go lower and test the top of this cloud. Does everybody follow so far? Pretty easy so far, right? So that's the S&P. Let's take a look at the YM, the Dow. Okay, Dow, same thing. Major uptrend. So you're sitting there going, how do you use it on different time frames? And I'll show you that in just a second. So on the YM, we're in a major uptrend and we're right now in a minor downtrend. We're adjusting. We closed yesterday below the purple, which we want to be short, right? We want to be short as of yesterday with the anticipation of it drifting lower when it gets to the cloud. Then we'll look to cover our short, or if you don't want to short it, wait till it gets down there and you can buy your long position. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ here, let me remove this little box. The NASDAQ, oh Lord, look, that thing's super weak. It was a good long here until it crossed where? Below the purple. And then look what it's doing. See how it went from b below the yellow to the purple? Purple didn't hold. All right, where would we go next? Choo, top of the cloud. Top of the cloud held, bounced for three days, and now it's diving. So it's going to go next to 420 on the NASDAQ. Let's take a look at the Russell. The Russell was really, really strong, and it was holding up the other indexes pretty much. Until today, it crossed below the purple. Where is it going to go? It's going to go and drift down here to the bottom of the cloud. Now, if the index futures were to reverse and start going higher, which one would we want to play? We'd want to trade trade the strongest one, so we would jump in the Russell first because it's it's got the strongest look to it. So you can immediately see what looks good, bad, or indifferent. Let's take a look at crude oil. So crude oil right now, what should you be right now in crude oil? Long, short, or leave me alone. In crude oil, you should be long, and you and if you're not long, you're going to let it drift down to 41.69 because you've been above the cloud for more than three days, and that lagging line has went with us, right? Let's take a look and see how how um, this fared on crude oil on a on a weekly or a monthly chart. So you can look at crude oil here. Look, nice little sell here on a weekly chart, and it's it's held up pretty well. You can also do it on a daily. So I'll show you. It'll give you a bunch of different looks. So it's pretty, pretty good signals. So here was a short. All right, it stayed below. You still didn't get three days above. That was only two. All right, and then boom, here you had three days above. All right, so short and then cover. That's not too bad. And then look back here when crude oil really got messed up. Look at there. You had a short back here, overhead resistance, reshort, and you stayed short all the way until right there. So it's a really good quality signal, and it's very flexible in nature too. It's not real rigid. So let's take a look here at at gold. So go, what should gold be doing? This is a really good example of something that went a little parabolic on us and the, the cloud held it up fairly well. So you can see here in this example, and this is a live chart of gold, we had three bars above the cloud. We went higher, we consolidated, we drifted back into the cloud, and then we bounced back up off that cloud. So gold's along and you can pick it back up as a relong at 1267 with a target of about 1350. Take a look at the bond market. Bond market, 
it's above the cloud. We've sold off. The cloud's held it both at the top of the cloud and the bottom of the cloud. And today, it's trying to transition. It's right back above the purple. So today is a decent time to play long on the 30-year bond because it bounced off the cloud and is back above the purple line. Let's take a look at the TY, which is our 10-year note. So 10-year note, above the cloud, sold off into the cloud, bounced, came back down, bounced again, and it's above the purple. So those are good longs. Let's see what else you guys want. Give me a couple of charts here, and I'll take a look at whatever charts you guys want me to look at really quickly here. Crude oil, uh, TLT is the same thing as bonds. Uh, that one is between the yellow and the purple and in the cloud, so I would leave that one alone. Shouldn't ES and GC be opposite? No, don't, don't fall for any of that stuff. That's garbage. Um, a lot of people will tell you, like, well, if the index futures go up, the bonds will go down, and if, if gold goes up, ES should go down. Those correlations work until they don't. They, they're negatively correlated, but they couple and decouple all the time. Walmart, WMT, Walmart. Uh, Walmart's a good long uh, with a stop of 66 and a target of about 70. Uh, um, it doesn't matter. You can give me a, a forex pair, John. Just give me one, and I'll, I'll take a look at it. SLV is going to look just like gold. Uh, it's a long right here at 1651 with a stop of 1559 and a target of 1850. EURUSD. Um, that is a good long with a stop of 114 and a target of about 118. WHR, WHR, okay, let me remove some of these here. Uh, Whirlpool is probably going to drift to the cloud, so I'd be a buyer at the top of the cloud. I wouldn't touch it right now, I'd just let it drift a little bit lower. ES Daily is a long hour and 10 minute short. How would you trade that? All right, so let's, let's do that in just a minute. SBUX. Um, Starbucks is a short. You've got more than three days below the cloud, and the lagging line is down there with you. CUBE. So let's see here. CUBE is uh, a, a good long. It's at 3126. Stop at 3001, and target would be uh, about 3296. Uh, LVS. LVS is about to be a good short. So see how it was above, and it gapped down, and it continues to go lower. When it breaks this cloud by one, two, or three bars, that's going to be a good short, and the lagging line looks like it's going to follow, so it's probably going to go back to 38. So I would short it as soon as it drops below the cloud. Stop would be 46.57. Target would be $38. Corn. Corn I would leave alone. Uh, corn is a little whippy right now. It's a better long than short, but soybeans looks phenomenal. Okay, Soybeans looks way better than corn, as you can see trending and it's respecting the turning line, I would buy it with a tight stop of 10, 21.78 and a target of 10.88. Uh, DBA, uh, DBA is a long with a stop of 20.66 and a target of 21.50. Costco, Costco is in between, it's in the cloud right now and the lagging line's not cooperating, so that one's a little ugly, I would just leave it alone. Yep. I'm in a day trade short ES, but not sure how to use the cloud for a target and trailing stop. All right, we'll cover it in just a second. At KC, coffee is a good short with a stop of 123.05 and a target of 115. CMG, CMG is obviously a short. We also call this stock E. coli. Um, it is a short with a stop of 444.38 and a target of 400. VRX. VRX is a short with a stop of about 40 and a target of 20. So let's take a look at the multi-analysis, multi-chart analysis. So let's go at ES because there's a couple of you asking this. So ES on a daily is a short. Does everybody see that on the left-hand side? ES on the daily is a short as of yesterday. So then what we do is we can, we can bring in the 60 minutes. So how many days was the daily good for? Then we know we're going to be in it four weeks at a time. Now notice, see where the 60 minute sold off last night at the end of the day yesterday. See where the 60 minute right here, see that sold off one and closed down one, two, three bars. On the 60 minute, I only require one close below the cloud. So I'm going to zoom this in just to make it a little bit more powerful for us. Notice, notice what happens. See how this was a sell off and see how you were good on a 60 minute. You're usually good for what? Three, four days. There's your sell off. There's day one two, three, and then it went back above the cloud. So it's good for that, right? So 
there's the 60 minute sell off. It came back up, dropped low, overhead resistance, dropped lower, and going lower. So the 60, what was the time frame good for? How many days was 60 minutes? Anybody remember? Usually three days. All right. ES, same as ES. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's take a look. That's the 60 minute, but what's the 10 minute telling us? Okay. So the 10 minute is telling us, and remember the 10 minute is good for how many hours? Probably about three or four hours. So here you had it jump back up and then it closed back below. And in a 10 minute, it's saying it's good for four hours. So that's good. That's a good short for here. And then look, it came back up, overhead resistance, had one close above, and then we're looking for the short. So I wouldn't get long here just because we had one bar. I'd be looking for the 10 minute to jump up above and then close back below. Jump up above close back below because I want to stay on the right side of either the daily or the 60. Does that make sense? Everybody following so far? So what was the entry? Well, the, uh, the entry here on the 10 minute would have been around 2,055. If we're doing it right now live, the most recent sell signal on the ES would have been right here. Let me write it down for you. Would have been... 2,045 and a half, so 2045.50 would be the short. Overhead resistance stop would be right in this area of 2047. Mm -hmm. How would you take profit? Well, I would just look at the at the lows for an intraday trade. On that, I would be looking for this right here to be retested again. Right there, right there, and right there. You can also do a parabolic SAR. You can also do a risk to reward ratio, which we teach in the course. Um, that you always automatically calculate even before you place the trade. You should always know what your stops and kind of what your targets are before you enter the trade. Okay, so you use the longer charts. Oh, so let me show you a cool trick. So I use TradeStation, and uh, does everybody see where it says Ichimoku Cloud One uh, price location? I can double click this thing, and it'll sort for me uh, what's in a, in the cloud, and it'll say. Hey, this is in the cloud. This is below the cloud. But what I'm really looking for is when I see them and I sort them, and it goes new above the cloud or new below the cloud. And TradeStation is pretty powerful, so you can say it says new, newly above the cloud, and then I can click that, and it'll hyperlink to this, and it'll show me stuff that's newly above the cloud or newly below the cloud. And it's a really, really powerful way to scan for charts. And I can say, all right, I'm gonna load everything up in the S&P 500. I'm gonna double click. I only want the stuff that's above the cloud to be at the top or below the cloud to be at the bottom. And then I can just go through this and go, all right, there's newly above, newly below. TOS can do it too. And in the course, we have videos showing you how to do it. If you don't have TradeStation or TOS, don't worry about it. There's a very easy way to get around that. Okay. So uh, let me show you a cool trick here. What you can do is you can go over to stockcharts.com, stockcharts.com. And you're going to scroll down to the right of the chart, and there's these little blue boxes. One of them says additional tools. You're going to click on the one that says predefined scan results one time. And then you're going to scroll down here to where it says candlestick patterns. You're going to scroll down to the bottom of that one where it will then say Ichimoku patterns. And then you can see moved above the cloud. There are 17 that moved below the cloud today, or moved above the cloud, moved below the cloud. There's been 27 of those. So it's 17, 17 change, 27 change. So there's 120 there and 255 there. So what we're going to do is we're going to hold down our control key, we're going to left click, and then left click. Okay? All right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to let that, how I got there? Yeah, you just go back to stockcharts.com, scroll down to additional tools go down to predefined scan results and then scroll down down here to candlestick patterns and then you're going to look for moved above the cloud moved below the cloud then you're going to hold down the control key and left click on those things and then you're going to I've got these tabs set up now these predefined scan moved above the cloud I'm going to sort that by volume okay you can also sort it by exchange. Don't do penny stocks and don't do over-the-counter pink sheets. That's craziness. You'll just get killed. So don't do that stuff. Go over here and sort this one while that one's working. I'm going to sort this one by exchange. Okay. And it looks like there's a lot of people using their free website. This is a free website. It won't cost you a dime. Okay. Will not cost you a dime. 
I don't have any financial relationship with these guys. I just know that they have a free scanner that'll do this if you don't have TradeStation or TOS. TradeStation and TOS will both scan for anything that's above or below the cloud. Okay. So here we've got. Let's see here if we've got anything. Oh, right, here we go. Uh, moved above the cloud, ETSY. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this. All right. Now we've got a chart. I'm just going to click this button right here. One, two, three, four. The first little chart button. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to set the chart up right. I'm going to go uh, Ichimoku full. I'm going to say I don't need anything else. Just make my chart bare because I don't really care about anything else right now. You could use the RSI. You could use the ADX. ADX is a good way to filter out for trending and non-trending. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hit update. And here we have it. Look, it, it bounced off the cloud and it's newly back above the cloud. So that is a good re-long trade. Anything else you see here? Moved above the cloud. Look here. Everybody knows Procter & Gamble, right? PG. Let's put that in there in our chart and see what it looks like. PG. So PG was in the cloud, and today it's trying to close back above the cloud. That's a new long. Okay. See so if we find anything else in here that looks interesting. Uh, ICE, Intercontinental Exchange, ICE. I know that one. Traded it many times. ICE. ICE. Look at here. It was in the cloud. Whoosh. Had a nice big gap up. That's a new long. Mm -hmm. You're good to go. Uh, let's see here, John Hubert. I bought the Ichi course before being uh, before being able to set up Toss. How about I email you so I can find out how to set that up? Yeah, uh, uh, John. If you just go back into your course, there's a video on how to set it up on Toss. You just log in with your username and password, and it's down at the bottom, like how to set it up and toss. Super, super easy. How do you use options in your trading? Um, I use it to risk less money and uh, uh, risk to reward ratios. What do you mean, how do I use it in my trading? All right, so there are some things that are moving above the cloud. Let's see if we can find some things that are moving below the cloud. Now, I filter this through exchange instead of volume. I'm not going to trade anything on the London exchange. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ here. So here we've got Agilent Airlines, ALGT. Here we have uh, Chef's Warehouse. Here we have Cray. So let's do AGE. No, hold on. Let me see where Agilent. ALGT, ALGT. Let's just go ALGT. That moved below the cloud today. Okay. Below the cloud. So it's below the cloud. That is a new short. The lagging line looks like it's moving below. So that would be a short at 156.92, and the target would be 145. Okay. See if we can find a few more shorts here. Uh, Cray, I've, I've traded that one before. See if I'm seeing anything. Uh, INTL, no. Intel. Intel moved below the cloud. Mm, interesting. Let's take a look at old Intel. INTC. So Intel went below the cloud today, so it's going to be a good short with a stop of 3064 and a target of 28 and a half. Oh, I use all kinds of that stuff, Albert. I trade whatever is working at the time is what I do. So any questions on how to do the scanning in stock charts? And I go over this in detail in the course. But if you don't have TradeStation, if you don't have TOS, if you don't have eSignal, if you don't have Ninja, this is a hack way of doing that. It's free, won't cost you a dime, and it's a great way to scan through a lot of stuff that is either above the cloud or below the cloud. It's a great way to do it. Okay. What if you just trade futures? Well, if you just trade futures, you can do it in TradeStation and TOS or Ninja. Um, they all have the scanning functionality. Yeah. So for I can do it in 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 the futures in TradeStation in two clicks. All right. <clears throat> McDonald's too far uh, from the cloud to enter MCD. Let's take a look here. Um, no, I would I would buy a McDonald's right now with a stop of 127.72 and a target of 35 dollars. Yep. So let me get back to the PowerPoint here, and then what I will do is I will then go back through. Um, I don't know if multi charts has it or not. You'd have to double check, and then I'll do some more symbols. Sound fair? So we went through time frame selection. We talked about that. We talked about the best stop to use was a parabolic R, SAR, and I did a lot of live charts. Okay. 
obviously you can see how powerful this is. It, it, it makes the charts really easy to read. All right. So success stories. The course was awesome. I've taken the bond trade and made over $900. Do you think I'm happy? I just entered the bond trade, shorted again, where I took profits earlier today after you made me greedy for possible further drops. I'm happy dancing. This is the first time I've had a successful trade during the course. I have the hardest head in the world. You couldn't have made it simpler, Mary. Uh, this is from Greg. Dude, uh, thanks. You are likely the only reason I have kept at uh, kept at it with trading, and now that I'm profitable, I can't thank you enough. It was really great, and I can't wait to attend the gold trading class. Thank you so much for all you do. The webinar series was a great experience, very informative and educational and lots of fun, but that's no surprise. All of your courses have been great learning opportunities and great values. Um, yeah, John, just call office. That's no problem. I'll give you the number in a minute. So will you be one of our next success stories? We are inviting you to join us. So let's talk about who this is for. All right. Uh, if you are serious about making real money in the markets, if you are looking for a proven system, if you can follow a simple set of rules and directions, and if you know that your success is actually tied to you actually taking some form of action, then you're probably a good fit for the course. Okay. Now, who's this not for? If you are a holy grail seeker, if you think there's some kind of holy grail in the market that's just going to turn you into a profit machine, I hate to bust your bubble, but that shit does not exist. All right. If you suffer, if you suffer from hopium, if you're delusional, in other words, if you think you're going to take a five thousand dollar account and by the end of May turn it into one point two five million, probably not realistically in your thought process. Thought process. All right. Uh, what about your power shift system, ADX line, combine the clouds with the system? I do, BC. I use, uh, I call that the power, uh, the power play when I combine the ADX with the cloud and um, the parabolic SAR. Yes, I use that a lot. I, I do that a lot, BCC. Um, if you if you suffer from guru itis, in other words, if you follow all of us on this webinar, and if you follow forty five thousand other trading gurus online, then Please don't take my class. Like, I, I would rather you focus on one or two or three people that you like and, and, and learn from those people, and then, then you'll be good to go. But try not to follow too many of us because we're all going to have different opinions, and we're just going to confuse the hell out of you. One, one of us is going to be long. One of us is going to be short, and you're going to be like, I don't understand. So you know, pick one or two guys or gals that you like and try to suck as much information you can and steal from them and make that a part of your trading plan. That's what I recommend. If you can't make a decision, obviously it's not for you. If you like to make things more complicated for no good reason at all, well, then obviously the course is not for you. So there are three types of people in the world. There are those that make things happen. There are those that watch things happen. And there are those that ask what just happened. Hopefully you're in the top two groups. Okay. So here's a fraction of what you'll learn. The number one best-selling Ichimoku course on the market today. I'm going to give you my seven proven setups with trading rules and indicator settings, with checklists and cheat sheets, with entries and exits, stop losses and targets. I'm going to teach you how to scan the markets with Ichimoku, teach you how to filter out the best trades so that you never guess what to do next, and I'm going to teach you how to avoid the head fakes on some of these trades. All right? Okay. So you have absolutely zero risk. You have a 100% satisfaction guaranteed, no questions asked. If you do not love the course, I don't want your money. I'll just give it back. We always over-deliver over here, and we don't want the karma. Life is too short, and I don't need the headaches. My goal is for you to receive 10 times the value that you invest in this course. So if you go to hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy, and I'm going to put this in the chat box so you can go over there. I'm going to show you what all you get. and. How much, let me see here, where is the chat box? Well, I've lost the chat box, there it is. Nope. Where's the chat box? Jared, do you see the chat box anywhere? I can put, it, I can put a link here. There's that, and send to all, and here's the telephone number. Let me get you the telephone number. 
859-963-3445. I'm going to text this to everybody real quick. There's that. Should be sending to all. I just don't see the chat box anymore. I don't do new. Uh, I may have closed it. All right, so here's what you get. Ichimoku Cloud Charting Secrets, 197. Ichimoku, how to use Ichimoku with candlesticks is in the course. I'm going to give you four follow-up webinars that will be live and one day of live trading. It's a grand total of $488. Your special offer today is $97 for this webinar only. There is a catch. It's only for the first 50 people. All right? Only for the first 50 people. And now what I'm going to do is I don't really have to usually sell this thing pretty hard. I'm just going to put this thing right here, this link up here, hubertcenters.com forward slash cloudy, area code 859-963-3445. I'm going to do my best to answer as many questions as I can. I have got six more minutes. You've got the link and you got the telephone number, although I don't see the chat box. I don't know why. It's kind of weird. All right, very good class. The fact that it is working well uh, with 826, 104 setting double is very fast, four-point range. Nice, Robert. Uh, what trading system do I need? I don't use TOS or TradeStation. Uh, I mean, it, it just depends. I mean, um, I like TradeStation or TOS. They're both really, really good. I don't think you can go wrong with either one of them. Uh, bond, bond class is really great for futures class, Hubert. Warn people about Dodd Frank uh, first in uh, first in first out in American accounts. Yeah, so yeah, futures. Uh, most people that trade uh, futures, it's, it's it's first in first out, unless you have a, a special software that changes that for you. Um, Hubert, how can I histogram plus DMI minus on toss uh, on TC2000? Uh, Robert, I don't know. I don't use TC2000, so I wouldn't know how to advise you. Sorry. How do I get the power shift in the ADX system? Uh, BCC, you'd call the office, area code 859-963-3445. If you guys want me to look at other charts, just give me the symbols. Make sure you, uh, okay, SD, let me see, SDRL. Um, that would be a leave me alone, I'm in the cloud. It either has to be above or below the cloud before I would touch that. Yes. Uh, Okay, uh, at, uh, G B P J P Y. Okay, G B P forward slash J P Y. Yeah, I know they for one, I can't do that for some reason. S G Y P, S G Y P. There you go. That is going to be a good short with a stop of 343. Probably goes to 250. H A L. Halliburton, I would wait to buy Halliburton at 3804 with a stop of 36 and a target of $44. DIS, DIS is a good long. Right now the stop would be 170 and if it went there, I'd rebuy it with a target of 110. XAU, uh, XAU, XAU is just going to be the same thing as gold. Let me just do gold, it's easier, at GC. Gold is a decent long with a stop of 12.58 and a target of 13.50. MO, MO is a good long with a stop of 61.82 and a target of 66. DPS, DPS is a brand new long, good long here at 92.33 and a stop loss of about $90 and a target of $96. How are you coming up with these stops? Okay, so that's a good question. So what I would do is if I'm long right here at 92.33, my stop loss here would be the bottom of the cloud, which is about $90, and then my target is going to be uh, at least, if I'm going to risk one block, I'm going to try to make at least two blocks, so I'm going to be long at 92.33, stop loss 90, target about 96. That's how I did that one right there. I just do it on the fly. After you look at these things for, I would say, 20, 20 30 days, you can just fly through charts and go higher, lower, leave me alone. Higher, lower, leave me alone. Higher, lower, leave me alone. It's just really easy. Uh, it just makes your life a ton easier. Uh, crude oil is, uh, I would wait and let crude oil roll back down to 41.69. I would buy it down there. Or I'd wait for a 10-minute signal to get re-long. If it went above 44.64, I'd be long. Or if it dropped to 41.69, I'd be long. Can you take out some coffee futures? Coffee futures, KC, uh, would be at KC. 
Coffee is a short with a stop of 123 and a target of initially 115 and then 110. Facebook is a long with a stop of 113.55 and a target of 130. O R L Y, I got two more minutes. O R L Y is a long with a stop of 260 and a target of 290. W C O, W C O is I can't type. W C O, sorry, does not work for me. What else you got? Can you show if the E S has re-entry short on a 10 minute or where would you get short? Uh, at E S, uh, E S is not a well, it's still below the cloud. So right now, it's you're just playing out the next trade. You'd have to wait until it uh, slammed into overhead resistance here at 2046 or 2047, and then short that with a tight stop loss, and then roll it back over. AAPL. Uh -huh. Let's take a look here. AAPL. AAPL. Apple is a good short with a stop of 97.84 and a target of 85 dollars. SRPT. I have got three more minutes left here. SRPT is in transition. SRPT uh, is in transition. I'll just leave that alone until it decides if it's either above or below the cloud on that one. BX reversing. Uh, BX is about to be a good short if it can break below $26. Below $26 is a good short. You typed it wrong. Okay. SPRT. I am dyslexic. SRP, uh, S, did I do it again? S P R T. Okay, you want S R P T. Uh, this one is a good short with a stop of twenty and a target of ten. Hopefully, I got it right. G P N. Here's your link, guys. HubertCenters.com forward slash cloudy. Telephone number eight five nine nine six three three four four five. Uh, the dollar index, let's go cash on DXY. The dollar is a short with a stop of 93.56 and a target of $90. PHM, PHM is a good long here with a stop of about 17.60 and a target of 20. I've got two more minutes and then I'm done. TTOO. TTOO is kind of sideways. It's junky looking. I just leave it alone. It's too sideways right now. I, I would have it have to go back above the cloud for me to touch that one. That was just ugly. Mm, dollar short markets will go up. That doesn't always work, unfortunately. Um, SPR don't get too tied into correlations. Correlations work until they don't. And if it, if if trading was that easy, we'd all just look like oh, dollars down, markets up. Doesn't always work that way. I wish it did. Uh, at U.S., the bond market bond market right now is a long, and on a 10 minutes a long, probably goes to 166. SYN, SYN would be a buyer at two bucks and a seller at 280. That is it for me. I appreciate you guys showing up. Have a good rest of the day, and I wish you uh, much luck trading the rest of the week.